Okay, this is in Ensland Christian's beginnings. This that's the source of it. Okay, now I want to just get right down to right down to where it talks about here. I'm going to go over here now to this Mithraism and how it had an impact. An impact on Christianity. I'm going to read at a moderate pace. When Mithraism is compared with Christianity, there are surprisingly many points of similarity. Of all the mystery cults, myth Mithraism was the greatest competitor of Christianity. The cause for the the cause for struggle between these two religions was that they had so many traditions, practices, and ideas that were similar, and in some cases identical. Many of the similarities between these two religions have already been alluded, alluded to, but they were, but there are many others of greater or lesser significance. The belief in immorality, a mediator between God and man, the observance of certain sacramental rites the rebirth of converts, and in most cases, the support of high ethical ideas were common to Mithraism as well as to Christianity. In fact, the comparison became so evident that many believe the Christian movement itself became a mystery cult. They say Jesus was a divine Lord. He too had found, now when we know, and I, want, I need to state this, we know that the Hebrew Savior, his name was not Jesus, okay? We know that for a fact. Jesus uh, would, 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 be, would come from Greek, okay, which means, if you're looking at that word, hell Zeus. So, but we know that people use that and they, they don't know, but the, the Messiah's name was Yeshua meant savior when you look in again you go into matthews and you study uh look up in the greek jesus the word for for savior is soter okay so that's the, the but when you look in the hebrew for the name of savior it's yasha so yashaya means my savior so i just thought i would would expound on that so getting back on point so again they say jesus was the divine lord he too had found the road to heaven by his suffering and resurrection. He too had God for his father. He had left behind the secret whereby men could achieve the goal with him. You can look in that footnote and Enslin, again, there's the source of it, uh, page 190. There were many other points of similarity between these two groups. Let us look at a few of them. One, both regarded Sunday as a holy day. See that? So we that have woken up and it's nothing, not an attack or a slight on, or, 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 or you know, a play on trying to uh, demean someone who goes to church on Sunday who didn't know that Sunday, yes, that comes all the way from uh, ancient Babylon, okay? Or Mesopotamia, where they were worshiping the sun. They were passing their children to the fire on the sun. They were worshiping the luminary, the sun. That's why it's called Sunday, okay? So they worshiped on, on that particular day. And that was the first day of the week, not the Sabbath, the seventh day, or, or when we should have Sabbath on the seventh day, the seventh day rest. Now, staying on point. So in Methodism, they worshiped Sunday, okay? As a holy day. Point two, it says, December 25th came to be considered as the anniversary of the birth of Mithra, and Christ, or who they say, Jesus, right? Uh, also, point three, baptism and a, com a communion meal were important parts of the ritual of both groups. Now, we know Christianity did this, but I'm talking about prior to all this, baptism means meaning the submersion, meaning the cleansing. We know that the whole earth during the flood of Noah, that's a, a, similar, a, a similitude of baptism. All of it had to be immersed to be cleansed because all the filth and the pollution that was promoted and being taught and practiced on the earth. Okay, so we know that the Most High's priests, they had to be cleansed. They had to go into water because the Most High God is a God of cleanliness. But stand on point. Point four, the rebirth of the converts was a fundamental idea in the two cults. Point five, the struggle with evil and the eventual triumph of good were essential ideas in both religions. Point six, in both religions, only 
only initiates who passed through certain preliminary phases of introduction were admitted to the mysteries which brought salvation to converts. Okay, there were many more similarities between Christianity and Methodism or Methodism. Most of them purely superficial. These which have been mentioned are largely only surface likenesses because the reasoning behind them is quite different, but the general effect is almost startling, okay? The sacraments of baptism and the Eucharist, meaning that particular word, meaning the uh, the sacrificial things that uh, one had to do. Let me give you the definition of it here. Let's go look at it really quick. make this uh make sure eucharist so the eucharist was what the sacrament commemorating they say the last supper now we know dear family that the israelites were commanded to keep passover and to do this as a memorial see how christianity they quote unquote now if christianity if they're saying they serve the true living god we got to make sure that we're not doing mithraism adding to it taken away from the true worship how the most high instructed the children of israel because when we when people are doing these things i know a lot of people's parents they grew up and went to the church or whatever it's a good thing that the most high's word we had his word but as we begin to study and find out like wait a minute these people are trying to bamboozle us and this is why some people say well i don't follow uh i don't believe in hamashiach or who they say jesus the christ now when i say jesus the christ i'm I'm speaking of the person of Messiah and just speaking in layman terms so you know who that I'm, the person that I'm identifying, right? Um, so this is why some people, they end up going to the college and say, well, see, I don't believe in, see, Christ, he was, that wasn't a real thing right there. That was kind of just made up. I told you when they they get our kids into these colleges and to, into these institutions of what they call higher learning, the children become smart or think that they become smarter than their than their parents and no longer listen to their parents because their parents hadn't been studying in the first place. So now the Most High came to bust up all their lies by giving the truth to his sons and daughters, those who, who really care, who are really crying out to the Most High, who the Most High is really pouring his spirit and giving that double portion to them so that who really want to make it, right? Okay, now, now stick with me here. So, we see that this is what the Eucharist, or what that meant. It meant what? The sacrament of commemorating the Last Supper in which bread and wine are consecrated and consumed. They say the Christian service. There's no, in the Bible, there's no such thing as a faith called Christian or Christianity at all. The word Christian meant, and it was a derogatory word that was given to the disciples who were Judites, were people of melanated skin. They were called Christians as a derogatory word. Yeshua never came to make a religion called Christianity. Christianity is a religion, okay? So these are facts, and I know it's hard for some people to 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 uh, to hear that, but it's true. Getting back on point now. So the sacraments of baptism of Eucharist have been mentioned as rites which were practiced both by Christians. Are you hearing this? And pagans. So if someone will say that we are Christian because, well, I'm a Christian because you got to buy. No, this is the he, this is the book of holiness. This book that I'm holding here before me, it's the book of holiness. It's a real book. It's an oracle that the living God gave to his people as a testimony for those of us who would be living and guidance for us to direct us. So these other people who happen to be the people of the most highest curse. And this is something that, that I was looking at here. I'm going to give you a, a, an extra. Let's call this one an extra here. Look at this for a second. Coming into today's study, I wondered to myself, right? Right here. Right. Where'd it go? What's that? Hold on. Right here in the blue. Make this big for you. I wondered this myself in passing. Isaiah 34 and verse 5 says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Just so happened to speak, we were just speaking of Herod, the Idumia. And upon 
the people of my curse to judgment. So it tells us here, the description of bloodshed suggests tremendous ideas of supernatural judgments. Idumia, they said, this is their commentary, here denotes the nations at enmity with the church. Now we know, and this is speaking in layman that we know church, that's the replacement theology. Who is the church? This is, this is a church of Satan, right? There's the Catholic church. There's the church of this, there's a church of that. That word church, and when you look at it, it's ecclesia, meaning the called out one. So they, this, is, this is why the Most High has a wrath in his divine judgment and have cursed them because they're not going to repent. These people are not going to, these people are never going to tell you and I the truth. These people are perpetuating lies. Then they, they study us. They become as though they weren't. They become the people in the authority of the book. So now we ourselves are left looking at them as if, first of all, as if that they're going to, there's someone that's noble and regal and righteous when they're, they're lying. They've lied through their teeth. To make, so these people are, they vilify God's people. Do you know what that means, vilify? Vilify means to paint you in a bad picture. Paint you as, look, when you look at someone um, in, in the quote-unquote urban area, that, oh, yeah, I got to grab my purse. There's this black man walking by me. He, he got these, he's a thug. He's a killer. He's a gangster. <laughs> you, have, he, you have no power to be gangster. They're the gangsters. They're the one shooting stuff up into the stratosphere or whatever the case is. They're the one setting up religion and all these false things. They're the one who, who uh, uh, making people become impoverished, right? They're doing this. They're the one who's setting up schools and, and teaching us to go against the Most High. Stick with me here. So the Most High has an issue with that. They're the one who have the power to enslave you and I and, 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 and put us. Now, they, they were given that power because we only broke what the Most High said and didn't know who we were. But they're the one who are doing what? Oppressors who hold themselves guiltless. They are the one, according to Zechariah 1 and 5, who have perpetuated the hurt. The Most High said he was only a little angry with his people, but they have helped to forward that by teaching these lies, by making you impoverish. So, we see that, dear family, they're the one that got us believing that you are in the church. When that word, they're the one that believing, got us teaching us all this, what you call futurism. I know a lot of people may not understand that futurism is certain things of the teaching of the Antichrist, the one man Antichrist, uh, the rapture, being raptured up, things about the two witnesses, and they're the one who puts out the movies and promotes these. So these people, and they, they, would, they would paint themselves, they're the one who've given us images of the angels of Christ, Hamashiach, who have given us the images and, and made these in our mind and put this in your mind. So now you're looking at it, you're looking at yourself, you don't have the esteem or the confidence that, we, that you should have because there's been someone fighting against you. I know I'm kind of going on the rant here. I'm going to get right back on. But I just wanted to, to, to point out, these are the people who vilify you, and they're actually the villains, but they put themselves up as patriotic, noble, charitable, kind, generous. Well, who wouldn't be generous when you were raped and pillaged and, and stole for centuries, for thousands of years? See? We see that. When you look at that word, they're the one who put their theologian. Theologian means a trained agent. So a lot of us don't have the time to, who's going to dedicate our time and, and studying of the scriptures. You have, when you have what? Livelihood, children and family that you have to rear. You're living in the system. You're living in the captivity. But the Most High made it possible for us to do it. That's why he's given a space of repentance unto us. See? So staying on point. So that word church, before 1524, there was no such thing as word of church. It's ecclesia. God's people, Israel, was called out. The bride of Hamashiach is not the quote-unquote Christian church. Christianity comes from Mithraism. That's what I'm showing you. 
They took a little bit from here, there, even from the bruise, and then try to pin that up on the Most High and then put Christ against the Most High. But we were like, well, well who going to listen to us? We don't know. We, well, I don't know. Try to make it, make it confused. Hiding themselves, knowing exactly what they're doing, but getting on point. So they would do that. They, so what we're reading here that, so Idumia here denotes the nation. No, Idumia is the nation of Edom. It's Amalek. They're the chief ones. Let's make it point. See how they see how they try to brush it off on everybody else? It's the nations. Yeah, it's the nations who are at odds with Israel. Let's get that straight. Israel is the dispersed who have been scattered throughout the four corners of the world, who broke God's commandments, who didn't know who they were, and now the Most High is having compassion and mercy upon us, and we are crying to him. This is why we're able to pray the way that we pray. This is why those holy prophets were talking about that double portion was given to them, not given to these big old secular, where uh, these big old uh, secular organized religions. These are the people who have uh, infiltrated even the truth and got people to sell out or whatever the case is, sell out for the bag or whatever, for, for, for their comfortability, for their lifestyle. I hope you get what I'm saying. So these are the people, I do me a, is first of all Amalek along with every other nation okay that bloodshed the tremendous his, his judgment is coming upon all the nations who will not submit under Israel that's Isaiah chapter 60 verses 14, uh, 12 through 14 and the nations who refuse to serve you will be utterly wiped out so also, it says the kingdom of Antichrist. The kingdom of Antichrist, every one of these kingdoms have been anti-Hamashiach. But if you don't really know the true narrative, of, and I don't know the true narrative and not searching and seeking, we would never know that. So by default, we would just live our lives there, keep us pacified, happy, chasing it. But there's something about your spirit, something about your soul. No matter how high up in uh, society that you might get doesn't matter if you're a football player basketball player business mogul something in your soul resonates if you're truly willing to submit to the spirit of the most high that you know that something's not right so you have these people like well i'll never be happy with this so they want to pacify you if you'll take the money that'll keep you happy to, to sell out uh, you know turn and betray your god they'll give you the money if you're not they'll make your try to make your life a, a miserable and ultimately try to come after your life. But you have the mantle. You have the anointing. They cannot go beyond what the Most High allows them. I hope you hear me clear. Again, we cannot fully fathom the horrors of the awful, of that awful season, of the awful season that's going to come to those found opposing, look at this, the assembly of Hamashiach, the congregation of Hamashiach, who the world calls in ignorance Jesus the Christ, the anointed. That's the point I wanted to make. Although baptism did not originate with the Christians, still it was not copied from the pagans. See that? So when you say the Christians, we understand, when we say we're Christians, we, if anything, are pre-Constantine Christians. We are those who were person, our ancestors, the apostles, they were, they were tracked down, tortured, okay, vilified, demonized, <laughs> and they were called Christians. Now, the people who were doing this, who had the power, now took their place and said, we are Christians, <laughs> right? So now, by default, those who are unlearned now go to these organized religions or these, what the Bible calls harlotry houses, and they get their fix, their spirituality, and learn it. So when we begin to open the Bible and read outside of the lenses of Christianity and organized religion, then and that's what you are experiencing here, dear family, and what you have been experiencing. I hope you you hope I hope you get that. So baptism, I told you, baptism, when the world was flooded, it was baptized. Baptism means fully submersed. We have to be baptized. But not in this this uh, uh, this practice of what they're doing, sprinkling water on to be a part of someone's church. Only only the Holy Spirit can baptize you into the body of Hamashiach. 
So even if you went down in water, and we know that the baptism of going through the water is a prerequisite, you must be baptized. Why? Because it tells us in Mark 6, 16 and on down, they who baptize shall be saved. He who is not baptized, they will be damned. So you have to be baptized. But following that, that baptism of you, you know, you feeling the conviction through the teaching of the preaching, baptized in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, okay, that's, a, that's leading to your repentance. You're being fully submerged. But that means you have to be engulfed with the Holy Spirit too to really the fire that, that Yeshua will baptize us with. Then that's how you get put into the assembly of the saints. So again, although baptism did not originate with the Christians, still it was not copied from the pagans. Uh, it seems instead to have been carried over. Now we know when they say Jewish, this has been carried over from the priests, the Levites, the Levitical. And before that, through Noah, they all went in. Remember when the children of Israel walked through, when they walked through the, uh, they walked through the sea, they were all being baptized. They were under that cloud. And that, the rock that followed them was Hamashiach. They were baptized. So we can't, we're not falling for their things, their semantics and their trickery. We know, we, we see past that now. So this came from the Levitical, uh, the Levitical ordinance that was given. 